And in Hong Kong Bank, we believe that it's important to grow our own talent, which is why we have various graduate programs in the system. We have the functional graduate trainee program. We also have the management associate program that cuts across the entire franchise. Whatever you learn coming into the program is something that you will use for the future when you take on a permanent job in the bank. The MAs get involved in a lot of brainstorm sessions, and that's for me, very vital to uh, idea creation. Let's say your career follows a normal or traditional flow, it could be some time before you get to interact with a senior person in a company. The people that we attract generally are people who are passionate about banking. Uh, that's what I see. Really hardworking, who believe that banking uh, provides a, an opportunity for them to really be close to the communities where they operate, to offer financial services and help. Uh, where they feel are very important to the economy and uh, to the communities at large. I've got a big mix of MAs and GTs on the team and they work on simple things to the most complex things. The entire proposition for Singapore business is done by someone that was an MA and then joined my team uh, after they finished the MA program and that's a big deal. It's a question about um, making sure that you understand there's a massive opportunity and if you have the right focus, right attitude, the customer-centric uh, approach, you can do a lot within the bank. Good afternoon and welcome to our Hong Yong Bank Live Q&A session. My name is Sharon Ko. I'm the Head of Employee Learning and Development and I will be your moderator for this afternoon. For those of you who just tuned in, stay with us for the next one hour <coughs> and do take the opportunity to ask the panel any questions that you may have about our graduate programs and career opportunity at Hong Kong Bank. Our panel speakers consist of four key members from our senior management team. Let me get them to briefly introduce themselves to all of you. Charles. Good afternoon. My name is Charles Sik and I'm the Managing Director of Personal Financial Services, which is basically the retail bank for Hong Leong. And uh, just a little bit about who we are in Hong Leong. We are uh, one of the largest, in fact, the largest division uh, uh, for Hong Leong Bank. And, uh, you know, we, we've formed the larger retail bank that serves uh, more than three and a half million customers. Um, so maybe over to me. Over to <laughs> Hi <Fiona>. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Fiona. I'm head of uh, human resources at Hong Leong Bank. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today. I heard that there's uh, a lot of people waiting uh, to chat with us. So this is our first time uh, going live with Graduan, and we look forward to the questions that you have for us. Uh, hi, my name is Shailesh Grover. I am the Chief Digital and Innovation Officer at Hong Leong Bank. Um, before I tell you, uh, you know, uh, more about that, we uh, have been rated the best digital bank in 2018 and 2019. Uh, we made the submission for 2020. Hopefully, uh, you know, we get it again. But that's what the team does. Uh, the team works with the business across the region, so five countries, Vietnam, Cambodia, Singapore, Hong Kong and Malaysia and uh, we focus on delivering a digital human experience. Zalman? Hi, thanks Sharish. Hi, uh, I'm Zalman. I'm the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer for Hong Leong Bank. Um, what we do is uh, we ensure uh, efficient and um, uh, communications to our customers as well as our soon-to-be customers. Um, my team also looks at uh, co the corporate communications and um, PR functions for the bank. So a lot of it is centered really in, in getting our brand out there, we're getting our brand to the market and communicating to potential audiences. Uh, finally, we also look at uh, an area that has become increasingly uh, important and uh, that's uh, sustainability because um, even though we function for today, I think we've seen in the last few months especially, it's very important that when we run a business, um, we must ensure a continuity of that business and we not only become a sustainable bank or business but what we do is sustainable for the rest of uh, other Malaysians and for a sustainable uh, future for Malaysia as well. Okay, thank you panelists. 
Um, I can see we have about 70 uh, graduates that are actually online. We had a bit of a technical uh, issue there because they couldn't hear at the beginning. Um, loud and clear everyone, if it's not, please do type in. Okay, um, you can start posting in your questions through the chat, uh, but to, uh, to, to kick start, um, the first question is uh, you, to Fiona. You have uh, started your career as a management associate. How much or little have the graduate program changed since then? That was a long <laughs> time ago. <laughs> okay. uh, but to be honest, it has not, not that changed much. that much, really. Uh, I, I joined a, a management training program. It was a two-year program, uh, and uh, I focused solely on HR. But regardless, you know, whether you're doing marketing, finance, HR, operate, it doesn't matter what you do, right? Uh, it's, it's the same rigor, the same discipline, you know, you need to have a good attitude, you need to build uh, resilience and, and you need to be agile, uh, you need to be able to be resourceful. So that hasn't changed. Fundamentally, it would have been the same in 1990s <laughs> uh, and, and today. Uh, but what has really uh, changed is that I think the stakes are higher today cause, because of technology. And there's a lot of more information, right? Uh, you know, you, you just Google and, and you can find a lot of things that you need to do. So the stakes are higher, the competition is steep. Um, we're moving faster. So, so that's, that's the part where people really need to catch up, I think. But fundamentally, the intent of the program, uh, the fact that the, the managers need to spend a lot of time coaching, uh, you know, guiding, that, that has not changed. Okay, thank you. And this writes nicely to the next question for Shailish. You have five MEs with you in your division. Um, can you share with us a little bit about the projects that they are that they are working on? Sure. So um, the five MAs that uh, Sharon is talking about are the MAs that completed the MA program and then joined my team. I have a lot more who are currently MAs that are, that are working in um, what we call DIO, the Digital and Innovation Office. So they work on all kinds of projects, um, and their projects range from um, you know, simple things where you're trying to make an experience for the customer on a channel of customer's choice better, to coming up with a brand new proposition for a specific market. And I do want to highlight the fact that so I've got one MA that focuses on Vietnam. And that person did such a great job that he was seconded to Vietnam from Malaysia for, for a period of six months. Um, then there's another one that's focused on um, the Singapore proposition. Um, there's one that's working for Charles, uh, looking at the wealth proposition. So they, they get to work uh, you know, on a wide range of projects or initiatives. And they also get to work with uh, various levels of uh, senior management because they need to understand two things. One, what's the bank strategy in terms of where we want to go? And number two, which is even more important, is what do the customers want? And what are the customers' wants and needs? So they look at all those things to then you know, come up with what would make sense for the business and, and for the customer. OK, thank you. Um, this question is directed to Charles. Charles Sik, and for those of you who just joined us uh, this afternoon, Charles Sik is the Managing Director of Personal Financial Services. Uh, he has 11 MEs in his division, uh, working on various uh, projects, and uh, um, I think uh, seven of them have actually moved into permanent roles. Charles, maybe you can share with the audience this afternoon uh, some of the roles that they have moved into and what are they currently doing. All right. Well, 11th, uh, well, I kind of lost count. So <laughs> thanks for reminding me that I've got uh, 11 MAs. Um, yeah, your PFS is a big place, right? Uh, and as I said, it's it, we, we, we are the bank for the consumers. And, uh, you know, there's a lot going on. Uh, so we have, we have a lot of projects around uh, digital, uh, meaning how do we connect with our customers through a new channel, uh, either is the app or internet banking where they can actually get uh, the products that they want, uh, understand what they need to do for the respective products that they have, or even having a conversation with uh, somebody that they, they want some answers from. So uh, 
a lot of the MAs that I've seen uh, the last couple of years uh, have now gone into permanent roles where they really own a particular product, business, or a segment where they basically are accountable for uh, their respective KPIs in regards to it could be income, it could be a particular service experience, uh, it could be a particular uh, target score that we want a customer experience uh, scores to be, uh, it could be a project that brings on a new platform where we can operate seamlessly with the customers. It could be operating like new things, like recently we, uh, because we had a pandemic, we've got to re-engineer the way we communicate with clients, uh, we've got to re-engineer the way we we uh, uh, do transactions uh, over the phone. Uh, we had to have recording capabilities to do that as well. And uh, we figured that we actually could use some of these te new technologies to reduce the amount of papers that we use to get customers to sign, for example, for each transaction. So there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of the MAs find it uh, a big place uh, to kind of navigate to see what they like uh, in their careers and what they like to do and uh, where their strength is in terms of uh, as they start off with their career in terms of what they like to do. So yeah, it's a big place. It is, it is. Um, and um, this question comes from Amaprit, maybe to Fiona. Her question is, uh, would it be better to wait uh, to join the program after obtaining a bachelor's or master's? There, well, there is no, no finite way to join a program, right? I think it's the, the most important thing is uh, your readiness level. Uh, we've hired folks where they join the program and then halfway through they want to do the masters, right? So that's, that's a little bit disruptive uh, to, to our arrangement. Uh, but most of the time we also hire uh, folks who have done masters, but there was feedback saying that, oh, you know, I, I should have worked first and then when I do my master's, it's, uh, it's a bit more meaningful. So there's no uh, right or wrong, right answer or, or wrong, uh, right or wrong here. Uh, I think it's your own mental state of mind, right? Uh, there are many, many candidates that we've seen, they are ready because timing-wise, you know, it was, uh, it was the right time to join, uh, uh, to come back to Asia, especially when we hire from overseas, right? Uh, they, they know that the market is hot, they want to learn as much as possible, they want to grab the opportunity. Um, and uh, as far as uh, folks who want to do the masters because they want to broaden their knowledge, uh, that's, not, that's not wrong either, but I think you need to think through. The, the, the trick is to ask as many questions as possible. Okay, so, and, and once you make up your mind, then, you know, we've got candidates where they say, you know, I really want to join Hong Kong Bank, but I want to do my master's first. Can you please wait for me? Which we have said, yes, we will. But make sure you don't stuff up your grades, right? Make sure you continue to, to, to do well. And then you uh, join this And you're consistent. And then you join when you're ready, right? When you're ready after you come back. So, so I think that part, uh, we're a bit more flexible. There's, there's no right or wrong uh, when it comes to that. Thank you. Belman. Yes. Uh, what makes Hong Leong Bank different from any other banks or companies? Oh, how long is this session? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's like the million dollar question, right? Because when we're talking about uh, brands, it's really about how we can differentiate ourselves. So when you talk about dif different, um, one aspect of looking at it is how we are different internally, and the other aspect is uh, externally. So maybe externally first, um, what we want to make sure we can do is we differentiate ourselves from other banks. Because in the future, when uh, banking and financial services become much more commoditized, which is also already the case right now, it really depends what bank can offer something which is different in terms of the experience to customers. We as a bank want to make sure that whatever we do for our customers is really built around our customers. Uh, and we want to take that experience of being built around a customer to deliver the best uh, experience possible for all our customers. And hopefully that makes customers not only join us, but prefer to stick with us compared to other banks. Uh, it's a long journey and process and a lot of work to be done to be able to achieve that. Um, but I think we've started that journey and we need to continue to do that. Um, internally, of course, myself as a pretty new person in the banking industry, um, I feel that Hong Kong Bank is very different from a lot of other banks. The experiences we have, the 
a variety of experiences in terms of the people that we have hired and interact with. I mean, I, for example, I'm not from a banking industry. Uh, I'm from a telco and I'm working in Hong Leong Bank. We have a very diverse um, uh, group of people, minds and experiences that help us get to where we want to go in delivering that brand experience. I also think among all the banks that I've had experience with, and a lot of companies too, we're quite advanced in terms of digitizing our business, really improving and making our experience for customers really uh, uh, go up that uh, higher step uh, in terms of experiences that customers uh, have with us so that we really become different from other banks. And that's just a, a little part of maybe of how I think we are different. There's a lot of other things that are great to experience uh, working in Hong Kong Bank, of course. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I just add on that, right? I don't think a lot of people <coughs> out there realize that we are more than 100 years old as a company. Uh, that means we have been very uh, able to, to move with the times, right? So what Zaman was saying is, uh, you know, we don't hire bankers per se. We hire non-bankers. We're going digital. We make it a priority. Uh, we want to innovate. So that's, that's really very different from, from I, I guess, your traditional bricks and mortar business. And, and Charles also will be in a position to share some of, because his business is very big, right? So he's got a lot of uh, uh, innovation, uh, innovative ideas coming through that. Yeah. I, I also want to add, right? Uh, you know, we talk about banking, non-banking, whether you come from a banking career or not. I think, you know, uh, I think Hong Leong Bank is unique in the sense that we are looking for people who are problem solvers. Uh, people who actually have very great communication skills to communicate an idea and take it to life. And we have so many examples where we have projects and we have things that, that people can get themselves into and say, you know, and, and, and adopt an idea and take it, especially MAs, uh, that we gave them projects for six months, uh, even as long as one year, for them to take a particular idea and, and see it through fruition or as far as they could before they land their, their next uh, job or role. So in that sense, uh, we're not looking for bankers per se or not, but really people who really could solve problems, communicate really well, work well with others, and uh, also be able to execute some of the ideas that we, we, we talked about. That answered some of the questions here, so I'm just going to move on to another question. But uh, this one is especially for you, Fiona. Question to Fiona from Nazri: What is the fundamentals? What are the fundamentals in working for Hong Kong Bank? The fundamentals working for Hong Kong Bank. I think we've <laughs> <laughs> my peers are laughing. Uh, you must be strong. You must be mentally strong. You must uh, build to last. Okay. Uh, you have to be resilient. Uh, you you have actually it's not just Hong Leong Bank. I I was I wouldn't say it's just Hong Leong Bank. Right? It's any bank anywhere. Uh, you must have the courage to do the right thing. That part tips you over, right? So whether you're a junior person, whether you're a senior person, there there shouldn't be any packing order. The the most the, the most important thing is are we doing the right thing? Are we doing the right thing for our customers? Are we doing the right thing for for our employees? Uh, that's that's fundamental. Uh, you know, we have a lot of values, uh, both at group level, uh, as well as uh, at the bank level, right? And and they are actually uh, uh, complementing each other. So at group level, we have uh, we have words like honor, right? In integrity, entrepreneurship, right? For us, you know, we want to collaborate to win. We're here for the long term. We want to have fun. Those are the things that that you know sort of uh, build who we are. So so. I hope that answered the, uh, her question. The, the, the only thing I'd like to add is, so you, you have to be curious. You, you, you cannot become part of the fabric of BAU. So the more questions you ask you know, the, the, to learn and to then uh, you know, drive change. Um, as a, I can tell you, I, I worked for Barclays uh, prior to this, and I'm not a banker. Before that, I was in telco. Before that, I was in uh, startups in Silicon Valley. Uh, so the, the opportunity is, you know, do you have the curiosity to learn to make the change? Um, and do you have the tenacity and the patience to see it through? That's very, very important. There will be...
fresh, fresh thinking comes into play where you keep asking the why, 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 get to a point where you can break it down into smaller, uh, you know, manageable chunks and then get it, uh, see it through to the finish line. Okay. Salman. Yes. Uh, to, all the, to all the graduates who just tuned in, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us. We have 116 uh, 16 students uh, online uh, this afternoon. The question uh, from Mohammed program fast track my career. How? I see that's a great question. And I once I I got to know more and was more familiar with that program. I wish that I had the same kind of experience when I started my job because I did not uh, come from a management uh, trainee program, right? Mm -hmm. I think one of the uh, best things about it is uh, exposure to a lot of different um, areas of operations within a very, very short period of time. That allows uh, especially people who are new in the job market to quickly gain experience faster than on a normal track. Because the way the program is structured is you do move around, you stay for a few months, but then you move on to do other projects or work in other areas, right? And there's no other faster way to learn the ropes, get experience about how uh, our company or the bank operates, right? And get to know colleagues and the, the people who are movers and shakers all over the organization. Uh, and sometimes I think some of the MAs probably know how to solve problems or who to talk to better than some of the uh, other staff who have been That's working here even longer, I think. True. And I think that is probably one of the, one of the best uh, advantages. Of course, in addition to all the additional formal training courses, we do spend a lot of effort and money to really equip our graduates with the best knowledge and uh, training, right? Coupled with the, the training, coupled with that experience and then fast track of uh, learning the ropes, I think you get to become an experienced person uh, and employee much faster than any other traditional way. And I really see that every day. Now, of course, it's not easy. You are challenged to find out a lot of things on your own, uh, depending on the people you interact with. Sometimes that information is a bit easier. You still have to work hard, but that process of finding out really is invaluable experience, I think. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, some of the questions, and if I can answer, <coughs> will be when, do, when is the program starting this year? We, we, uh, it will be in October. Um, this question is for you, Charles. Uh, they want to know the difference between the management associate program and the graduate training program. Okay. The, uh, the difference is really the graduate training program uh, resides in a division, which means the graduates choose the division in which they want to work with. Uh, and, and then set forth uh, their careers from there on. I think the management associate program is different in the sense that you get to experience the entire bank where you can rotate yourself into areas where it could be a uh, consumer bank uh, division, it could be uh, a business banking, corporate banking uh, division, it could be treasury, it could be Islamic banking, uh, and. And it could be a, a functional area where you could go into finance or you could go into an operations which supports the entire bank. So there are no really uh, fixed division uh, where you want to build your career. It's really getting a sense of what the whole bank is all about. And then after your program, you have the, the opportunity to choose uh, where you want to kind of kickstart your career from there on. And that's really the difference uh, between the two programs. Uh, Jagdeep Singh would like to find out a little bit more and this question is directed to you, Shailesh. Good afternoon. My question is how do you see the industry evolving in the short to medium term, taking into account the current economic climate and with the introduction of alternatives such as fintech companies? Sure. So, um, you know, the economic environment is, uh, is a challenge for everybody, not just banks. And uh, let alone the entities, it's a challenge for you know, the general man on the street as well. Uh, everybody's impacted in their own, own way. Um, people are losing jobs. There are all kinds of stuff that, uh, that we all know. Plus, it has changed 
um, the, the normal you know, ways in which we moved around. So I think um, if I look at it from a glass half uh, you know, full point of view, there are all kinds of things we can talk about as negative, but then as a result, I think Charles touched upon it um, you know, earlier, this has also created newer opportunities. So we have had to, for example, rethink a lot of things across the customer's life cycle and across the employee life cycle on how do we make sure that banking being an essential service, how do we make sure that we continue to uh, you know, serve customers uh, in, the, in the times of need. At the same time, physical channels are a challenge. So how do we use digital and other means to make sure um, customers get what they need? Right, so those are, those are some of the things uh, which uh, you know, have resulted in some new solutions, things like that. Coming to your fintech question. So fintech, uh, I think a lot of people talk about fintech is going to disrupt this, fintech is going to disrupt that. And <clears throat> I think there is, uh, there is some truth to the fintech uh, forcing change in the, um, in the ecosystem. And then there are very few that actually see it through beyond the first couple of years. So they do create value. They did force all banks across the globe to start thinking differently. They did force all banks to focus on experience, on um, newer ways to deliver uh, or use technology to deliver experiences to customers. But in majority of the instances, the ones that are most successful have actually ended up partnering with a bank or a bank having partnered with a fintech. Because what banks have is access to uh, an existing customer base. What fintechs bring in many instances is newer value they've created or newer ways to deliver value to customers. So it's, a, it, it's very common to see more examples which are successful where the two, uh, whether it's a bank and a fintech have partnered together as opposed to have competed against each other. Now, uh, let me weigh in on, on what, what Shalesh said. I think fundamentally, a lot of you have questions around, should you join the banking industry today? Or should you move to a fintech? Because it, it sounds a little bit more exciting. And I always tell people, banking has three fundamental things that you've got to think about. Number one, the banking industry or a bank actually has a very strong customer base. So, you know, that customer base, it's, it's a base that's been built over time which most fintechs actually want, want to get to where we, we are. So that's always a challenge for fintech. The other one is money, right? Uh, fintechs rely a lot on uh, funding, right? Either it's private equity or they, they get people uh, to invest in, in their companies. Banks don't have that problem, right? Because banks are generally extremely profitable and we use that profit to drive the activities and the, the solutions for the future that we invest in. And the third one is really around talent. Now, you see fintechs, they, they do have few talents when they start up, but they struggle to attract more. And, and that's where I find the difference with the banking industry, because we have the ability to draw in talents. And this is one of those programs that we are doing today uh, that, that, that gets the young to come in and, and learn a little bit about banking and see what some of the choices they, they might want to uh, invest their, their time in and invest their, their, their ideas on as well. So think about that, right? Uh, the three choices that, you know, what differentiates the banks and the fintechs of uh, today. But you know what, even though we've had about uh, four or five months worth of disruption in our lives, I think we have spent a considerable amount of time in the last two to three years developing our digital ecosystem for our customer experiences that we've seen that our customers have felt as little disruption yeah. uh, during this period. And yeah. most of the activities that uh, the customers needed to do, they could still do on our digital channels. And th we saw that customers who, who might not have been so active in the digital channel before, suddenly really uh, exponentially yeah. grew their active rates inside those channels. So we're also working on the, the cool stuff uh, that fintechs also work on in terms of technology and then enabling our customer experience to be better and more digital. So that was like also quite good to see. No, and that's true, right? So over the last three months uh, with the pandemic, 
I think we work even harder at home. That's definitely. <laughs> that's for sure. And longer. <laughs> and longer. And longer we work no harder, time. longer. But that uh, it was seamless, right? Because we had the tools. Uh, we've always had the tools. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, with or without the pandemic, and uh, and uh, we can and and because we have the tools, we work. We we made sure that things kept moving, uh, even though we were not in physically in the same place. Uh, I, I think that's that's quite powerful, right? So um, we've come a long way uh, over the last four years, I think. Uh, and uh, because of this crisis, we continue to leverage on the opportunity to do even more, right? So uh, we we have reviewed how we work. We have to change, like Charles said earlier, right? We have to change. Uh, Charles or Shailish, I think we have to relook at the customer journey. We have to relook at the employee journey as well, which is what we are collaborating to to, mm. to work towards. And the question then from uh, Zaidi was: If you are relook, if you are going to relook at the things that we are doing and the way we work, are you also going to relook at the structure of the program? We've changed the program structure uh, twice, once. No, we had two changes, right? We, we, we had the original structure and then we took the feedback <coughs> from the, the first two cohorts and then we tweaked it a little bit. So to answer that question is, as long as the feedback come, keeps coming through, because you guys are the ones going through the program, we are the ones running the program, uh, you, know, you, you will be in the best position to let us know what is working and what is not working. So if there is a need to review some of the areas, then we would. Um, and this question is to uh, to all four of you. What does success look like? Uh, you know, if you're in the program, sitting in this bench, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I think what success looks like. So uh, that that's one answer, uh, I suppose. Um, I don't know. I think I think it's really about enjoying the work. Uh, you know, all of us uh, on this bench here probably spent. Uh, a good 25 to 30 years plus 20, 20 to 30 <laughs> years plus of our career in uh, you know uh, maybe non-banking but banking uh, large in a large part and if you don't enjoy what you do it's really tough right uh, it's today you know if you look at jobs it's almost a 24 7 job you know if you are not in at, at, at work at home, you'll be answering emails. In your holidays, you'll be responding to some emergency that needs a, a decision or uh, that needs some, some, some validation or stuff like that. So I think it's going to be a 24-7 kind of a world. And, uh, you know, seriously, if you don't enjoy what you do uh, and find it challenging, it's, it's going to be tough, right? And success will look like 30 years from now, whatever you define it to be. So I, I think success... You know, it's a very subjective thing, right? It means different things to different people. Um, if you are someone that is super aspirational about, you know, stuff, whether it's about making money or, you know, uh, getting to a certain level, then if you, if, you, if you get to that, that's success for you. On the other hand, if it is, uh, you know, if you, there are some people that really, um, really empathize and, and relate to whatever you know environment they are in. So, you know, if you if you accomplish something, put a smile on a customer's face, or you know, depending on what what fancies your your interest, success would be that for you, right? Uh, but if you're asking what success for this particular program, obviously it's a two-way thing. One is what success for for the bank. We want to make sure that we attract the best talent. We want to make sure that we expose you to the best tools and, uh, and experiences that we've got so you can be more successful in what you, know, what you have uh, ahead of you. And as far as you're concerned, um, the way I describe to some of uh, my friends in the casual setting, I think Hong Leong is a regulated startup. So for you to get the opportunity to make a difference, being part of a startup which is regulated and is well funded as, as Charles said. It's a, it's a rare mix, uh, and I can say from my personal example, I had no reason to come all the way from London to, to Malaysia. And here I am two years and counting. And I'm actually quite enjoying what I do. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, uh, sitting in London, you, you form a perception of um, you know, what other, uh, other Asian countries might look like. I've never been in Malaysia prior to this. But like I can tell you, it's a startup. 
Um, the mindset is very nimble, very agile. I s keep saying it's regulated because we are a bank. So we have certain things that we have to do and comply with to make sure that we protect people's money. It's not because we like to do it. It's to make sure that people, people's trust in us is maintained. But you know, that's the opportunity and that's, that's what I would um, you know, see as success. So if you're able to make it, uh, I think that's the first, uh, first milestone you've achieved. Okay, thank you. A lot of the students out there, we have 227 wow. viewers wow. at the moment. Wow. So for those of you who just join us, uh, stay tuned, don't go anywhere for the next 30 minutes and keep <laughs> your questions coming in. They're very interested in wanting to know the framework of the program. Uh, so from the time they come in, uh, the interviews, and they are selected, what happens next? So, so I'll, I'll make it uh, generic for both programs, right? What happens next is you have to uh, go through your onboarding process, right? Which is a, a couple of months. Uh, so we, we look at a few things. Uh, you go through uh, our, our company, our group history, understand who we are, understand our values. And then there would be uh, exposure to you know uh, the digital uh, uh, the digital pillars that we have laid out for the MA and GEs as well, and then the compliance issues and you know every division will be introduced to you over the the, the first three months. Uh, thereafter, you would be assigned to your functions. Now, I think that whether your is a is a functional program which is the graduate program or it is the uh, the one that cuts across the franchise which is the MA program. I think fundamentally what you would have is a few things, right? You will always have a coach, right, to guide you. Uh, for those who need a mentor, you would have a mentor as well. But our learning framework of 70% on the job, that, that's where the bulk of it comes in. The 20% learning from others, your, your coaches, your mentors, would be, would be the second part. And then your 10% classroom. But throughout the program structure, you will always have check-ins uh, via Sharon's team, who runs the program uh, quite tightly. Uh, there will always be an opportunity to showcase what you have achieved during the course of the program. Uh, and there will always be consistent dialogue with your line managers, with your mentors on you know, uh, what you've learned and uh, what your aspirations are, what else you want to do. So I, I wanted to keep it very neutral is because different functional programs would be, you know, on the technical side, you will learn different things. But the fundamentals, the offerings that we are providing here, uh, which is consistent, are the things that I've just mentioned. Um, the students is also wanting to know about the mentorship program. So as senior leaders, you are uh, mentors uh, to your mentees. Can you share a little bit about that relationship you have with your mentees? I'll take that one, okay? If you don't mind. Of course. Ladies first. We love delegation. I, abdication is more like it. <laughs> okay, I have always said this, right? A mentor mentee relationship is very tricky, right? <coughs> uh, you, you must have chemistry, otherwise, it won't work. Mm. But the, the responsibility of making that relationship work will always fall onto the mentee first, right? you have to make that call because the mentors are always there for you and, and, and the, the responsibility of the mentor is to hear you out, right? Uh, we are not supposed to uh, navigate you in any way. We're supposed to hear you out and then sort of help you think through how you would like to navigate. So that's why I always say that the mentor-mentee relationship, the onus is always on the mentee, right? So we, we do the check-ins to say, have you, have you connected with your mentee? Or they could come back and say, you know, Fi, I, I, I don't feel that connection. May I change my mentor? That has happened as well, right? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, so it, it is quite a, a difficult uh, relationship to set up. But uh, we've been quite fortunate, Sharon. I think uh, we've, we've had up, uh, we've got a, a process in place where our management associates uh, will do a sort of a speed dating, right? To see which <laughs> sea <it>. level <laughs> that they connect with. And, and the, the, the one that they resonate with is the one that they usually choose as a mentor. You want to take that too? You've, you've gone through the yeah, speed dating. Yeah, you were dating. saying something just now, <laughs> What was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> it we were was talking about mentors and mentees. Yeah, yeah, no, no. You have mentees with you uh, as well. 
Yeah, I think I, I started with uh, one and then ended up with about uh, four. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Definitely that, that process of uh, getting to know a speed, speed, speed the, 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 uh, was an experience for me because it was the first time I, I went through something like that. Um, but I think it was a great way for the mentors and the mentees themselves to just quickly kind of uh, have a quick try to f identify with somebody that uh, they feel is on the same wavelength or whatever. Uh, and I think uh, it's efficient and it works. Um, I think it's a very good aspect of the program because we have quite a lot of experience. We've done a lot. We've had some successes and we've made mistakes as well throughout our careers. Uh, and it's kind of a good way, I think, for us to help someone who's just entering the job market to maybe learn from those experiences uh, in an unofficial kind of forum. So I always look forward to the, the meetups that we have uh, to hear how they're doing and uh, whatever situation it is that they feel to maybe give another perspective. Um, and with, well, I try not, because I know they have supervisors yeah. to really advise and coach about the job itself. I guess because we have a lot of experience um, uh, in other working environments, um, we hopefully can add an alternative view or an, uh, a view based on the experience on how we've done something before to maybe give a new perspective. Not to really to direct, yeah. right? It's yeah. more about coaching and giving you uh, a suggestion of maybe another point of view, maybe. Uh, and I think that's, uh, a, again, something I wish I had when I started my job, but I think it's quite good. Okay. Um, Shailish, you have a couple of uh, interns uh, in your division. Um, the question is, uh, is it a good way to start your career? I think uh, internship is definitely a good thing. Um, more than anything else, it gets you off the couch uh, for, for, for two, three months of uh, your summer holidays. But it also uh, puts you in the real life situation, right? It puts you in the real world. Um, while the duration, like I said, is too short, it is something that um, starts to give you a different perspective, starts to inform your thinking, uh, and you know the best you can do is a piece of tactical work uh, but as a result you meet a couple of new people you you start to build a network um, and I can tell you from um, uh, you know experience of some of the interns I've had uh, on my team uh, they come for a short time they go back they stay in touch um, with the, with the team that I have uh, and uh, they then want to come back. So I've got, you know, for example, two of them that have now completed what they were doing. Uh, they want to come join the team uh, because they were exposed to and because they built a network uh, and because they spent a couple of, uh, you know, couple of months uh, year after year. Um, it, it opens up their thought process. It opens up their thinking. So if you if you rather, uh, you know, not sit on Xbox or whatever, you, Instagram or whatever else you spend your um, two, three months, I strongly recommend go, go do an internship somewhere. Yeah. Or, or to Hong Yong Bay, we are accepting internships. We are always taking interns. I think it's also about uh, the interns having to come in and know how to apply. Because what they study in school is very much theory. Theory, yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, so yes, to your point, we do have uh, interns who have actually uh, come back and they are now permanent employees uh, with Hong Yong Bank. Um, Charles, um, how the, the, the students out there would like to know what are some of the challenges that an ME will face when they actually come in? Oh, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I'm, I have three mentees, so a little bit short of Zalman. So. Yeah, I can tell you a little bit about some of their <coughs> challenges, right? Because, you know, um, if you work in a bank, everybody's really busy. Uh, and everybody's chasing after something. And uh, half the time, we don't have enough time in the day to do everything that we want to do. So when the ME comes in and they're supposed to do a project, they've got to do a lot of networking uh, to kind of understand what the work is, who do they talk to, who can help them and stuff like that. And those, those are one of the biggest challenges for them because trying to get answers to questions that they have 
uh, and uh, you know, trying to get it quick because they do have a project and they, they do have a timeline to, to, to race against as well. So one of the things, yeah, networking is extremely important uh, as you start off your MA career because it's good to get to know uh, the people that can help you in your project uh, and uh, you know, spend as much time with these people as you would in your own uh, project as well because that certainly uh, is one of those major challenges that they find. And once you get you know, to about a year or half a year, it gets a little bit better because you know how to navigate. It's like you know, learning to swim. Once you get to feel that you can survive underwater, you can at least learn how to float and you won't drown. And I think that's kind of an analogy what they feel like in the first six months uh, getting into the water. <laughs> I think, you know, just to add to that, and I might have said this before, you, know, you need to have the tenacity and the persistence to um, see through stuff. You have to be willing to ask the questions, uh, you know, and be curious um, because that's how you will, you will be able to build a network to then navigate the organization to then, you know, do what you're really uh, out there to do. But the first, you know, from, and this is based on some of the feedback I get from some of the MAs, the first six months they find it very, very um, challenging. At the same time, um, uh, you know, some of them look at it as an opportunity. Uh, but the second one, it, it's, it's second nature after that to them. Uh, so the first six months is, uh, is really the trying times where you have to, like I said, ha you know, be able to um, show your curiosity, ask why as many times as possible, um, you know, be willing to walk the floor and talk to people rather than send an email and wait for a response because you, will, you may never get one. Um, and, you know, those are the kind of things that uh, would make you successful and those are the kind of um, personalities that we are looking to, to attract as well. How do you find that when you, when you conduct your interviews? Is that is this what they want to know? So when you do the interviews, <coughs> and it's many rounds of interview, right? We, we have the first round, which is uh, over the phone, and then we have the face-to-face -face with HR, and then the final interviews will be together with the C-suite. They want to know during the interview session, aside from what they see on the TV, what other things do you look out for? So I can tell you my part, right? So I get to see the CV after you know a certain uh, set of screenings have been done. So the HR team has done their bits, and there's a level of interviews that have that have gone through. Once uh, you know, I get to meet the candidate either physically or, or virtually. I Personally speaking, honestly, I don't care what's on the CV. Uh, what I do care about is, um, you know, the attitude of the individual I'm talking to, um, the personality in terms of, you know, so what I test for is will you be able to survive in the organization? Do you have what it takes to navigate the organization? Um, are you curious enough? And I may be repeating myself again and again, but that's what, you know, I'm looking for. Um, and then, um, there are some situational things which you know, I use to surface those kind of attributes that I'm looking for. Either you have it or you don't have it. Um, and again, I don't care whether you have uh, straight A's, A stars. I mean, those are good things to, to brag about, but personally, you've made it to, um, you know, for, for one of us to talk to you, so I think you've cleared all those hurdles but I care about the attitude of the individual more than anything else. I look for personal stories. Uh, I, I, think, I agree with what Shailesh said, right? If, if, if the conversation has come to a stage where you're speaking with the C-levels, uh, who's really the final round, um, all the, uh, the, you know, the academic uh, achievements, your extracurricular mm -hmm. activities would have been taken care of. Um, then come the face, comes, comes the face-to-face, -face, right? And um, I've interviewed thousands of graduates. I've interviewed graduates where I say, it was a very simple question, why do you choose this course? There's a big difference when you take me through your thought process on why you chose the, uh, the, the course versus I chose this course because my family asked me to take this course. 
<laughs> right? So there's a, there's a vast difference there. There's a few of them like that. There would be. And there's nothing wrong with that. that that's being honest. But I, I'm looking for uh, you. I'm looking hard time you know uh, be either because their family uh, was troubled you know and and to go through those hurdles to get where they are full scholarship straight A's fantastic right so um, but Charles said earlier right to be able to deliver the message clearly is just as important so no matter what background you are whether your family uh, uh, you know uh, speaks English or, 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 or you know uh, uh, whether they only speak a dialect, you should take it upon yourself to be able to communicate clearly as well because that helps, right, with the conversation. You won't be penalised on it for sure because obviously you will have your own delivery style. But in, in a business context, it's very important for you to build that up. So personal stories will be what I, I'm looking for. I don't know about you, I'm shocked that you can say that live. Yeah, you don't care about the resume. I know? care about the resume already. That's what I said. Okay, so I, no, I did say that. Shyly said. That. <laughs> <laughs> I said the achievements and the extraculars would have been taken care of. Charles, by the time it comes to me, yeah. the resume I know, has been I know. taken yeah, care of. So well, I want to clarify <laughs> that, right? Because because what you have done in the past actually will define who you will be in the future. Yeah. That, that, it cannot be a total disconnect. So think, think about the things that you have done in your past, right? Gets you to where you are here today. So it defines who you are as of today, right? But you have not done anything for the future, so you, know, you will know who you're going to be in the future. But what you have done in the past actually defines you, who you are today. And that's important because we're not, we're, we're not saying the things that you have done in your, and the things that you say in resume is not important. It's extremely important. Because that's what got you here in the first place, right? Uh, the things that you have done in terms of leadership positions. Uh, you know, if you have you've done really well in school, it's really about how hard that you worked to achieve a certain goal, right? It shows tenacity. It shows a lot of perseverance. Uh, it shows a, 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 a very goal-oriented, a very ambitious kind of a person. So, yeah, I think that's important. But I think it's also important that when you come for an interview, the ability to communicate is then extremely important. So bear that in mind when you do come for an interview. Yeah. Uh, you have 10 how, minutes. How sure. many? We have 10 minutes. So how many are we looking for this year for the October batch? We're, we're looking for the right one. So it can be zero, uh, it can be 20, it can be a hundred, but it has got to be the, the right one, I think. Uh, so yeah, apply quicker. <laughs> but it's not first come, first serve, right? I think just to conclude what, what my, my colleagues have said just now, we're saying the same thing. We just deliver it differently. By the time your CV reaches us, everything else would have been cleared. I think we've looked at how you deliver your CV, what is your academic achievements, you know, what is the, you know, all the extracurricular activities that you do. But uh, to conclude, the intent, your readiness level to join the program must be there. Yeah. So whether it's after your bachelor's or after your master's, is your call, right? Uh, the second thing is uh, you you have to build. Uh, you have to have the resilience uh, to do this, to do anything, to do any job. Mm -hmm. um, things that uh, Shalish talked about. Uh, he said you 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 must ask the right questions. You must challenge the status quo. You must have the curiosity. All in all is, you have to be thick-skinned, right? When you come into the work environment, right? You have to be able to handle rejection. You must have that urge to get a yes at some point, right? Uh, and you must have a lot of empathy. So these, these three things, these are the things that, that sort of gel it together. And it's not just for the ME program. It's anybody who wants to take on any role in any organization. Charles. Simon Dim, my question is directed towards Charles. Can you provide advice on three tangible actions I can take now to be at your position in the future? Three tangible. You must be thick skin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I, I, I think uh, you know you got to ask yourself: uh, Are you a leader, right? And if you're not, then you got to. You got to really uh, look at things where you, you get yourself into a leadership position. 
The second part of it is, are you a good problem solver, right? Are you good at solving problems? Because if you're not, then it's going to be very, very tough because as a leader, you, you are supposed to set a direction and, and, and really look at issues and try to resolve them as fast as possible. The third one is really around people. And I think, I think that's part of leadership, people can say, but mm. I think if, if you are able to work with a group of people, like-minded, who are equally ambitious and who are equally very strong in supporting uh, the team, uh, you can go really, really far, right? Uh, people who are pure individuals who love to work alone, well, be a programmer or something, right? That you don't have to talk to people, you got to work and do your thing. But if you really want to be a, a, a manager like me, then I think those are the three things that you, can, you need to think about. Michael, that we only have five minutes, so if I can just open it to the panel to describe Hong Leong Bank in one sentence, what would it be? So maybe we can start with Zalman. Wow. <laughs> in one sentence, that is definitely very hard to do because there are so many experiences. But I think it's a, it's a place that you can learn a lot, but you can also contribute a lot. And hopefully for the betterment of not only the company, but our society and uh, country in future. Because we manage a very important aspect of uh, our life, which is uh, financial services. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's also fun. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll say that again, we are a regulated startup. Uh, we work really hard, but we play even harder. Um, and I'm sure you've got a sense from uh, the chemistry that uh, that we we've got tons of stuff to do and we've got crazy hours, but every opportunity we get, we we have fun. I would echo that actually. Uh, you know, I spend many hours at work, uh, and I actually do enjoy uh, you know being at work. I'm not sure about my team, but <laughs> but I personally, I like <laughs> I like what I do, and I, I like who I work with. And uh, I, I think we have a lot to offer as an organization. Folks, you have one sentence. Hey! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very long So if, if there's one sentence coming from me at Hong Leong, you never ever have to worry about money. Are you? Right. <laughs> this is where money lives. So. Oh, okay, okay. That's a way to Go look for Charles when you need that, okay? <laughs> um, maybe, maybe can you just elaborate a little bit more on, you know, you said uh, you enjoy spending a lot of time in the office. Uh, tell the younger ones out there because we do have some questions on work-life balance and flexibility. Uh, so if you can just do that uh, before we wrap up. I don't use work-life balance as you already know. Uh, I use work-life integration. Uh, look, unless you are in a, maybe a smaller company where the work hours are a lot, a lot more flexible, I think uh, we do spend a substantial amount of hours here because it's such a big, big place right so you really have to learn how to weave what you want to do personally with your professional life as well you you, you make some friends here uh, you make sure you know how to uh, step back and take a breather whilst you're at work uh, you learn how to you learn different things you talk about different things at work as well right just just to make sure that the the, the relationship that are built uh, on very solid ground. So to me, it's work-life integration. Now, uh, it's, e it's easy for maybe a, a, a single person, not so easy for somebody with families, right? So I suppose uh, an example would be, you know, a mum with, with young kids. Uh, and how would you integrate that? I, I think as an organisation, we try to put some things on the table as well, you know, flexi work, you know, uh, some, some understanding or some agreement where it makes life easier for you, especially in times when you need it, right? So there's no one formula. Okay, um, I think that's all the time that we have for this uh, afternoon. Um, and um, for those of you, a big thank you to our panel speakers. Uh, for those of you who would like to apply, please send in your resume to Hong Leong Bank Careers, HLB Career. You will also see the link on the screen in front of you. Um, 
uh, and that's and, and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay. They they have to pop up. Thank you. And in Hong Kong Bank, we believe that it's important to grow our own talent, which is why we have various graduate programs in the system. We have the functional graduate trainee program. We also have the management associate program that cuts across the entire franchise. Whatever you learn coming into the program is something that you will use for the future when you take on a permanent job in the bank. The MAs get involved in a lot of brainstorm sessions, and that's. For me, very vital to uh, idea creation. Let's say your career follows a normal or traditional flow. It could be some time before you get to interact with a senior person in a company. The people that we attract generally are people who are passionate about banking. Uh, that's what I see. Really hardworking. When who believe that banking uh, provides a an opportunity for them to really be close to the communities where they operate to offer financial services and help. Uh, where they feel are very important to the economy and uh, to the communities at large. I have got a big mix of MAs and GTs on the team. They work on simple things to the most complex things. The entire proposition for Singapore business is done by someone that was an MA and then joined my team uh, after they finished the MA program, and that's a big deal. It's a question about um, making sure that you understand there's a massive opportunity, and if you have the right focus, right attitude, the customer-centric uh, approach, you can do a lot within the bank.